ஹாய் ஹலோ வணக்கம் அண்ட் வெல்கம் பேக் டு எட் அனதர் எபிசோட் ஆன் லிட்டில் ஸ்லா யூடியூப் சேனல் ஸோ வி ஹாவ் தி ஜே மீட்டர் விண்டோ ஸோ யூ ஆல் கெஸ்ட் இட் ஸோ வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு சி சம்திங் அபவுட் தி ஜே மீட்டர் ஸோ வாட் இஸ் த டாபிக் தட் வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு சி டுடே ஸோ வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு சி அபவுட் அசர்ஷன் ஸோ வாட் இஸ் அன் அசர்ஷன் அண்ட் ஹவு டு யூஸ் ஸோ வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு சி அபவுட் ஒன் பர்டிகுலர் அசர்ஷன் வித் அன் எக்ஸாம்பிள் டுடே இன் திஸ் வீடியோ ஸோ வித் நோ ஃபர் தர் டிலே லெட்ஸ் கோ டு த வீடியோ If you have not subscribed yet to our channel, please do subscribe to Little Sla YouTube channel. Comment your questions and your queries in the feedback section. Please do share the video with your friends. So first let's see what is an assertion. So an assertion is a component that validates the response data. So we have the requests and when it comes or when we send it during the test or when we send any request. So we get a response. So this assertion validates the that response data from the server to ensure that it meets the specific criteria or conditions say for example here we are doing a login and if the password and username is correct automatically we'll get a welcome message if not we'll get incorrect username or password so that is how we normally do the testing or we normally test the response so these assertions are a key part of performance testing because they allow us to ensure that the server is returning the correct responses and that the performance of the system is meeting the expected requirements because when you are running a test with a huge user load not with a huge user load at least a 100 user or 200 users load and at some point of time the application might go down and you might not know that are you getting the right response from the server but when you have these assertions we might understand that we are getting the right assertions or the right response every time when we hit the request so jmeter has several inbuilt assertions so let's see them we have the response assertions which validates the response data based on different criteria such as text or patterns and response data so we'll see that some other day since it's very built in and it will be very simple so the next one is the duration assertions which we see here so this validates the response time of the server and ensures that it is within the specified time frame and the next one we have is the size assertion which validates the size of the response data such as the number of bytes or characters and then we have the xml assertion which validates the X- xml response data against an xml schema or xpath expression and then we have the json assertion which validates the json response data against a json schema or json path expression in addition to this built in assertions jmeter also provides various other assertions some custom assertions where we can use the scripting languages such as groovy javascript or python and this assertions allows us to create custom validation logic to meet the specific needs of our test case so overall assertions are an essential component of any performance testing effort that allows us to validate that the server is returning the correct responses and that the performance of the system meets the expected requirements so today in this video we are going to see about the jsr 223 the 223 assertion in jmeter so this is a type of assertion that allows the users to write so let me just add it to this response so this is a type of assertion so which allows the users to write custom assertion scripts using any scripting languages which is supported by jsr223 interface such as groovy we have groovy we have javascript we have bean shell we have java and many other supporting languages to this test case so one advantage before we move on so we'll see that one day so one advantage of using jsr223 assertion in jmeter is it provides more flexibility in terms of what you can check in the response data and with this assertion we can use any scripting languages that we are comfortable with so i am basically comfortable with groovy script so you might see more of groovy examples in my videos and another advantage is that we can reuse the same assertions across multiple test plans this can save us time and effort and as we do not need to recreate the same assertion logics to each test plan so for example if we have a thread group we can directly add the assertions in here so that we can validate that across multiple test plan or test cases 
much hope you understand that advantage we'll see about the disadvantage at the end of the video so now we will see an example so we have already added so to add it we have to select the request of the transaction controller and then or the we'll have to select the sampler and go to add and then come to assertions and then choose jsr223 assertion so in that way we have added the jsr223 assertion and i'm going to use groovy as i have already told you groovy i'm comfortable with groovy so i've chosen groovy as my language and then in the script area so let's enter the code so the first line is going to be defining the response and it is going to be brief dot get response data as string so what we are doing now in this particular line is we are getting the response from the previous request so that is what we're getting so any response that we get from this request will be saved in this response as string that's very important and then if the response does not contain or if it contains if it does not contains so i'm going to give welcome so this let me just show you i'll, I'll just show you before i run this one and then i'm opening a bracket so inside the if condition and i'm giving if the then the assertion result will i'm setting it as failure it's true and if it fails so if it does if the response does not contain the word welcome so this is what our code is going to do so it will it will assign that as failure and then it will send a message that we don't find the expected response or whatever you want we can even enter blah 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 so anything which we want we can enter it with this line and since it is groovy we might not need any semicolon or any other stuffs so we are set now so now before i run this let me show you what is the actual response i'm disabling it for now and i'm sorry i'm just let me just save it and let me run the script so just running it and here you can see so i have chosen html and i have already told you in the previous video that this view results tree please use it only during the validation and never ever use it during the load test you are always welcome to disable it so that we might save a lot of resources and it's always better you can run the test in the cli mode so this is one thing which we have discussed in our previous video yesterday so now we have completed so what i'm going to see now is i'm going i want to see that if i enter the right username and password i will get this welcome as the message and in case so let me just go back to this one and if i enter the password it's a wrong one and let me run this test again append to existing file append it so that i can we can see it below so yeah now just to continue so if in case you are running a load test please do i would suggest to just have only the required listeners and you can uh, and that too to get the required amount of data so better you can disable all the other listeners and this will save a lot of resources and you can complete your test without any failures in your mission okay so let's come back here so you can you see now so you can see the invalid username or password so in this example very f on the very first example so we are getting welcome since we are entering the right username and password and here and here we can see so the valid response is welcome and the invalid response tells us that is an invalid username and password so what we are going to do now is we are going to give the right username and password and that's the reason i gave welcome in this response so if you remember so we are using this welcome as the response here so i'm enabling it and let me run the test and we will see how does it work so let me go back and let me start the test i'm clicking on a bent existing file so that we can see the results here so we the first test has started now so the first screen is where we 
enter the landing page and then we go to the page where we browse for the products then we choose one particular item and then we choose it to the and then we open the cart and then we add it to the cart so here we can see that we are trying to add an item and we are trying to sign in so here we could see the word welcome and then that's the word that we have expected in the response so if the assertions really works we might not get any successful response because we have not given any response here and in case if we want to add it we can use the same word welcome but we will change the username as to and then we'll run the test so let me run the test now so I'm in the view results tree so here we can see that the invalid username and password and the request where I have entered one and two then when it comes to JS assertion so we have got the error as false and the assertion is failed then the expected text not found the response so what we'll do now is we will change this response and for that let me give the right username and password and now we should get the word welcome and this assertion should pass let me run it again and here we can see the username is u1 and the password is 1 and since we do not we did not set any conditions to display it so automatically we have get a passed condition and it went fine so just remember so this is one advantage so we can just set a condition which is very simple that if this does not work we'll throw a message otherwise we don't need to throw any message and it looks like everything works fine so I think you would have understand that so let's see the disadvantage before we close the video so the disadvantage of the main disadvantage of JSR 223 assertion is that it requires more technical expertise than using the built-in assertions in JMeter. Yes, you might have understand. So we got a little confused when we were trying to set up the conditions. So this needs little more technical expertise and we need to be familiar with the scripting language that we are using and we have to be able to write code that is efficient and error-free. So, so this is in a way efficient because we don't follow or we don't worry about the past condition. We just worry about the failed condition. And another disadvantage of JSR 223 assertion is that it's, it can impact the performance of our, of our test plan if the scripts are not optimized or if they are too complex. So we should be very careful when using this assertion and make sure that our scripts are efficient and we do not add any unnecessary overhead to the test plan. So in summary, overall I would say before I close this video, JSR assertion in JMeter is a powerful feature that provides more flexibility and customization options for our test plans. However, it requires more technical expertise and it can impact the performance of our test plan if it is not used carefully. So I believe this video would, be, would have been very useful to you. Until I meet you in another interesting video, it's bye-bye from Asan Shanmugam and Literals Law.